Okay, so what this is, is they're asking us to find f of x with the lowest degree, um, and the leading coefficient is equal to 1 with this given root. So the idea behind this is if x is equal to 2 plus 5 square root of 3, then the second root that must exist is 2 minus 5 square root of 3. We need to both turn these ter terms into factors. So to turn that into factors, I just move the 2 to the other side, and I am left with x minus 2 minus 5 square root of 3. And then the other do the same. I move the 2 and the negative 5, and that becomes x minus 2 plus 5 square root of 3. Now, the best way to look at this is to think of this x minus 2 that is first for both of these and look at this whole question as the difference of two squares. So the difference of two squares gives me x minus 2 quantity squared minus 5 square root of 3 quantity squared. I'll go ahead and FOIL the first one out that becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus. Now, remember when you go ahead and square inside here, the 5 gets squared, which will be 25. And then the square root of 3 squared is multiplying that times 3. Combine all of my like terms, and I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 75. So f of x for the lowest term here would be x squared minus 4x minus 71. So we want to find g of x with roots of x is equal to negative square root of 2 and x is equal to 5 plus i. We want to make sure this is the lowest degree for f of x, and the leading coefficient is 1. So again, we're going to start off in making sure we write its conjugate pair. So each of these have a conjugate pair. Remember the sign. So we are going to go ahead and take the first root pair. Um, the sign in front of the square root is what always changes here. That becomes x plus the square root of 2, and then x minus the square root of 2. Foil that out. That becomes x squared. And again, this is a difference of two squares, right? So that becomes x squared minus the square root of 2 squared, or just x squared minus 2. And that would be my first factor here. Um, if you want to multiply this out and FOIL it, you can. That just is going to become x plus square root of 2, x minus square root of 2x minus the square root of 2 squared, and that will always cancel out. That's why I said just to go ahead and use the difference of two squares. All right, let's go ahead and head back over to this other side. The 5 moves over. Same thing with the i for both of them. And that leaves us with x minus 5 minus i times x minus 5 plus i. And I keep emphasizing this. This is the difference of two squares, right? This is x minus 5 for both of them. And then 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So that leaves me with x minus 5 quantity squared minus i squared. Now i squared, I want to go ahead and replace that with negative 1. Multiply this out, and that leaves me with x squared minus 10x plus 20. Negative, negative 1 turns into a plus 1. X, x squared, squared minus 10x plus 26. All right, so to finish finding g of x, what we're going to have to do is multiply all of that together. So g of x is going to be 
x squared minus 2 times all of this. I'm going to do this in two different places. I'm going to go ahead and first multiply through by x squared. So when I multiply through that by x squared, I get x to the fourth minus 10x to the third minus 26x squared. Now I'm going to add that second piece inside there that I need to go ahead and erase the x squared so I can make room to multiply times negative 2. And again, remember, all I'm doing is I'm taking these two polynomials and multiplying them together. I'm just doing them step by step. All right, so when I go ahead and take the negative 2 and multiply it by x squared, I'm going to get negative negative 2x squared. Then I take negative 2 and multiply it times 10, and I get a positive 20x. And finally, negative 2 times a positive 26 gives me a negative 56. So that is g of x. g of x is x to the fourth minus 10x to the third minus 28x squared plus 20x minus 56.